Today's video is sponsored by the new Paperlike 2.0, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris. Recently I made a video talking about how I set up a brand new Mac. I talked about the settings I changed, how I set up the dock and the menu bar. And this video is gonna be very similar, except it's how I set up an iPad. More specifically, how I set up an iPad Pro for my Pro workflow. I use my iPad Pro for everything. It used to be that I would do everything on the Mac and that this was just something on the side. But now I'm even building websites on it. Now there's a lot to cover. If you wanna skip around, I'm gonna put some timestamps down in the description so you can check out whatever's most interesting to you. And just as a quick side note, I actually do set up my iPad mini a little bit differently because I mainly use that for entertainment, whereas my iPad Pro, I use mostly for work. So in this video, I'm gonna talk all about the settings I use on my iPad. And I'm gonna mention my iPad widgets and shortcuts. I'll talk about my professional app stack and basically everything you'd ever care to know about setting up a new iPad. Now, just like I mentioned in the Mac video, whenever I get a new Apple device, I like to set it up from scratch manually, just so I don't import any old baggage. I just want a fresh start. Because basically, I figure if something was really, really good and I used it, I'll think about it, I'll remember it, I'll need it, and I'll install it or set it up on the new device. Whereas if something sounded cool but I never actually put it to use and it was just taking up space, why keep it around? Now I'm gonna start at the very beginning, at the initial setup screen, and tell you step by step all the decisions that I make. But first, let me just mention, I've covered so many iPad Pro tips and apps and techniques and tools and accessories in the past, I'm gonna link those videos up down below so you don't miss out if you're new around here. So, I turned the brand new iPad on and one of the first things that I can change is the Express Settings page. When that comes up, I hit Customize Settings and then I choose Automatic Updates because I definitely wanna keep things as up to date as possible without having to worry about it. I also enable Location Services. Now obviously this is something I can change later or tweak on a per app or per instance basis. Then I add a few credit cards to Apple Pay and I do enable Siri, but I choose not to share my audio recordings. And again, I have to point out, it's very cool of Apple to even ask me. I know it took a little bit of a privacy fiasco for them to ask, but Amazon doesn't ask and Google doesn't ask. This time around, I decided not to set up screen time. I just get sick of disabling screen time for every app that I might need to use just really quickly. And even the animation, it loads so slowly to unlock. I choose not to share my iPad's analytics. Although if I was gonna share it with anybody, it would be Apple, but still, I turn it off. I do absolutely turn on the True Tone display because it's one of the iPad's best features. And then when I'm asked if I want dark mode or light mode, I just start off with light mode. Although I'm sure I'll end up changing it off and on as I just need a break or a change. So that's it for the initial setup screens. Now, once my iPad is actually up and running, the rest of the setup process for me is a lot easier with a physical keyboard attached. So the next thing that I do is head into settings and Bluetooth and attach my Logitech Pro external keyboard. I've used basically every iPad keyboard under the sun and I will link to all those reviews that I've done down below. After that, the very first thing that I do is head into settings under sounds and disable two things. Number one, the digital keyboards clicking sounds. That drives me nuts. It's like little pops, I don't like it. That gets turned off immediately. And also the lock sound, I don't need to hear it. Now, whenever I do end up using the on-screen keyboard, I always use the pinching gesture to shrink it down into a floating keyboard. So number one, I can swipe around with my thumb and type a little bit easier while I'm holding the iPad. And number two, so I can reposition it all over the screen. Then I head back into settings and I enable dictation. And that can be found in general settings keyboards. Next, it's time to customize my control center, the part of your iPad experience where you swipe down from the top right of the screen and have various buttons and controls available. First of all, I get rid of the flashlight. I also turn off the home button and then I add screen recording, dark mode, and voice memos. After that, it's finally time to start paying attention to the desktop and the default app icons. And I put everything except for Apple Notes, Messages, Safari, Apple Music, 
Apple News, Photos, Files, and the Settings app in a folder called Extras and place that folder on the far right of my dock. Then I swipe over on the home screen to the right and pin the Today View to my home screen, which keeps my widgets permanently visible. And in just a minute, I'll come back and show you how I have that widget section all set up. But first, I gotta download some apps so I can put them in there. The very first app that I grab is my password app, which is currently one password because I'm about to need to enter a billion different passwords. Like Quinn said recently, one password is boring, but it just works. And that's what I need. Next, I grab Notion because it's my go-to notes app at the moment for business stuff. It's just one of those things I can't imagine being without now that I've used it. And I do actually pay for it. I'm not just on the free version. For handwritten notes though, I still do prefer Apple Notes because nothing is faster than using that lock screen shortcut with the Apple Pencil. As a side note, I did recently check out Moleskine's Flow app, which has incredible tools. They're so lifelike, and it would be perfect to pair that with our sponsor today, Paperlike. If you really want a very Paperlike experience, I just don't like the subscription there. Even so, it's worth checking out if you're really into handwritten stuff. Now, my podcast app of choice is Overcast, but I can see from my podcast statistics that most people still hit our podcast using Apple Podcasts. Oh, what is our podcast, you ask, so you can set it up on your iPad? It's the Daily Tech After Party. It's free, it's all about helping you love your Apple products even more and get more out of them, so check it out, I'll link it up down below. Next, I grab the Drafts app because that is how I organize all my information that I find, that I want to tag and remember for later. Next, I download IA Writer, which is absolutely my favorite writing app of all time, either for the Mac or for the iPad. Another crucial app for me is MindNode, which lets me visually brainstorm and organize ideas, and I feel like it is one of the smoothest, best mind mapping experiences that you can find on any platform. And to be honest, using it on the iPad is one of my favorite places to use it, although I definitely use it on the Mac, and it still works on the iPhone really well, and it even works on my Apple Watch. Now, something that I do exclusively on the iPad these days is sign contracts. And so when somebody sends me a contract, my go-to app for getting that processed is PDF Expert. I've tried a lot, and yes, Apple Notes can handle some of that workflow, but nothing is as robust or nice to use as PDF Expert, in my opinion. For raw photo editing, I do still prefer Darkroom, although they recently introduced a subscription model. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Everything's moving towards subscription. I know people are getting a little bit subscriptioned out, but still, for me, as a previously paying customer, it doesn't cost me anything extra. So I'm still using it. Now, as a video editing professional, somebody who makes a living basically through editing videos and publishing them, I do use an app called LumaFusion on the iPad for video editing, but only when I have to. I still do most of my video editing over on the Mac because I basically really need Final Cut Pro. And there's just some extra advanced features that LumaFusion and iMovie or any other app, just they don't offer that I need. Things like optical flow, simple things like stabilization. And guess what? This is gonna be kind of controversial to some people, but I do go ahead and download and grab the official real Photoshop app. I do download Pocket for my iPad. It's in all my devices. It's my current go-to read it later app, even though it's not perfect. It's the one that I'm using right now. And I do a lot of research on the iPad when I'm coming up with content and Pocket is one of the ways that I sift through that content. Now, when it comes to email, I am just back to using the regular old Gmail app. Now, Apple Mail seems to do something funky with particular emails. It loses them, it auto archives them, and I, it never hits my inbox. But for some reason, when I'm just using the regular Gmail app, all my mail comes through as intended, and that's just what I need. Two more apps that I grab specifically to use just in the widgets on my home screen are Calzy, the calculator app. It's so cool to have a calculator always available right on the home screen, and Deliveries. That's just what I use to track my packages, still. The final app that I'm gonna mention here, even though there are more, is Twitter, because I use it in a very specific way. When I have a, a split screen open, I like to use Slide Over to switch around to have a third app on the screen, and I like to switch between Twitter and Apple Music. They're just perfect complements to whatever I might be working on. All right, so once I've got all those apps, I move them to the home screen, and then I start to get to work on my widgets. So here's the widgets that I use in the order that I use them. At the top is the shortcuts widget, 
followed by the drafts widget, then Calzy, because I'm always calculating stuff like budget or YouTube stats, and then deliveries, Siri app suggestions, and the batteries widget. All right, let me mention my shortcuts. Number one, I always have to have a widget that lets me connect to my AirPods Pros or my Beat Solo Pros with one tap. From the shortcuts gallery, I also go ahead and add dictate and share. And then I'm one of those people that likes to work to music for lots of different tasks. So I set a couple of my favorite playlists as shortcuts as well. And that's just super handy. Now, if you want lots of ideas for how you can organize all your different apps on your iPad, trust me, there's more than you realize. I made a great video like a year and a half or two years ago that I'm gonna link up down below to give you some mind blowing ideas. So I know I got pretty fancy with how I organized the dock on my Mac, but I don't do anything that crazy here. I simply stick the apps that I know I'm gonna access the most down in the dock. So basically drafts and Notion and IA Writer, MindNode, Messages, Safari, and Files. Before this wraps up, let me just mention a couple of my favorite iPad accessories that I actually use quite frequently. See, I don't always use my iPad with a keyboard attached. Sometimes I set it up with the Sateki stand and then use an external keyboard like the Keychron K2, which is a mechanical keyboard, very clacky, very loud. I absolutely love typing on that setup in IA Writer. I could go on and on and on and get into the minutia of all the different settings and stuff. I think this is probably a good starting place. I could do a version two of this video if you guys want me to dive in even deeper, so let me know. If you own an iPad or you're looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, now in the second version, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like you're using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. One of my favorite things about the new Paperlike is that it's much clearer to watch movies or view content through it when you're not writing or drawing. Paperlike actually gives you more control with your Apple Pencil thanks to that paper-like resistance that it offers. And yes, it really makes a difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, which who doesn't want that? Paperlike's great for anyone who wants to use apps like Apple Notes or Notability or Procreate or Affinity Photo, among many others. When you place an order, you're gonna get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can place a Paperlike 2.0 order using the link down in the description. All right, so thanks for watching. I know that was a lot, and hopefully that was very useful to you, whether you're getting a new iPad Pro or actually any of this stuff's gonna work with basically any iPad. So I hope you found it useful. If you want more iPad tips and apps and accessories, let me know. I can do a part two, like I mentioned, and I'll link up some of my other iPad content down below. Otherwise, don't forget to follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. Check out our podcast, The Daily Tech After Party. is growing like crazy. Really enjoy connecting with you guys there. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.